In this tutorial, I'll be giving a basic overview of Google My Maps. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you're signed into your Google account. Google will save your map to your Google account, so if you're not signed in, you won't be able to retain any of the work that you've done. Once you're signed in, go to google.com forward slash my maps. In the top left hand corner of the My Map screen is a Create a New Map button. Click that to get started. It will bring you to a basic version of Google Earth where you can import data points in order to create your map. The data set that I'll be working with is from data.gov, which is an open sourced collection of data hosted by the US government. The data set I will be using is a modified version of a post-secondary education data set. So I will title my map post-secondary education and hit save. This first layer will be my data layer. So I'll title it data. Just below the title there is import. This allows you to insert data into your map. I'll be using a file that's on my computer. The first prompt is asking for the position of your data points. This can either be done through addresses or longitude and latitude points. It detected the word latitude and assigned that automatically, but it does not detect the word longitude as it's missing an E. So I will tell it that this is longitude and that this should be treated as longitude, and hit continue. The second prompt is asking for a title, or what your data points should be named. I'll use institution name as the title of my data points, and hit finish. It's going to take a moment to load all of your data into Google My Maps and populate your map based on these data points. It can take a couple seconds, so be patient. Now our map has been automatically populated with all of the values from our data set. Right now it's sort of difficult to tell where they're all placed. If I wanted to see these broken up by state, there's a way that I can change the styling of the data point to make it more clear. In the data layer, click Uniform Style. It defaults to grouping all of your data points in a uniform style. You can change it to group them by a particular column in your data set. I will change it to group them by state abbreviation. Now it will apply unique styling to each of my unique state abbreviations. So this should color coordinate all of my data points based on state. And here we have it. Now it's very easy to tell which institutions belong to which states. If I want to add a data point, I can zoom into its location and up here in the top toolbar underneath the search box, I can click Add Marker. Then simply click the location, and it will allow you to fill out another data point. This data point is Black Hills State University. The city is Spearfish, and the state abbreviation is South Dakota. So now I've added that data point to my map. You can have multiple layers to display different kinds of information on the same map. If I was interested in the relation between national forest land and post-secondary education institutions, I could create a second layer called national forest land and begin to trace areas of national forest land that I was interested in. I'm going to make sure that my data layer is unchecked so that I'm not affecting that. And under my forest land layer, I'm going to go to the top toolbar just to the right of place a marker to draw a line. Then I'm going to click add a line or shape. What this will allow me to do is set a multitude of points in order to define a shape. So I'll go ahead and trace the Black Hills National Forest. and give it that title.
Now I can click off to deselect it, and when I zoom out, it continues to be clearly visible. I can now turn on my data layer again and see how the Black Hills National Forest relates to the rest of the institutions. One other interesting thing you can do with your map is to change the base map. Right now, it's set to regular map styling, mixing some elements of roadways as well as terrain. You can change it to something like satellite view if you're more interested in that. When your map is finished, there are a couple different ways that you can share it. Up here at the top, click Share. You can create this link and change the privacy. There are a bunch of different options as to who can have access to it. I'll change it to publicly available on the web and hit save. In addition to that, you can email it to, to people directly through this address bar. When you've shared it with everyone you'd like to, hit done. One other interesting thing you can do with Google My Maps is embed them in your own websites. Here, this three-dot menu just to the left of the search bar, if you click it and go down to Embed on My Site, it will give you an iframe. You can simply copy and paste it into your HTML code and it will display. That's a basic overview of Google My Maps.